thrilling, absolutely chilling, running out the acid opening race. Have you seen Pickering? I did see Colonel Pickering. And Henry, I am most provoked. What a noise. This is what the British population calls an elementary education. Oh, come now, sir. I think you picked a poor example. Did I? Hear them down in Soho Square, dropping H's everywhere, speaking English any way they like. You, sir, did you go to school? Oh, are you tyke me for a fool? No one taught him tick instead of tyke. Hear a Yorkshireman, or worse, hear a Cornishman converse. I'd rather hear a choir singing flat. Chickens cackling in a barn, just like that one. Gone. Gone. I ask you, sir, what sort of word is that? It's our gone that keep her in her place. <laughs> Not her wretched clothes and dirty face. Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? This verbal class distinction should now be antique. If you spoke a Shida, sir, instead of the way you do, why, you might be selling flowers to I beg your pardon, sir. An Englishman's way of speaking absolutely classifies him. The moment he talks, he makes another Englishman despise him. One common language I'm afraid we'll never get. Oh, why can't the English learn to set a good example? Oh, to people whose English is painful to your ears. The Scotch and the Irish leave you close to tears. There even are places where English completely disappears. In America, they haven't used it for years. <laughs> Why can't the English teach their children how to speak? Norwegians learn Norwegian, the Greeks are taught their Greek. In France, every Frenchman knows his language from A to Z. The French never care what they do, actually, as long as they pronounce it properly. Mm. Speed of summer lightning. Hebrews learn it backwards, which is absolutely frightening. But use proper English, you're regarded as a freak. Oh, why can't the English? Why can't the English learn to speak? All I want is a room somewhere Far away from the cow night air With one enormous chair Oh, wouldn't it be lovely? Lots of chocolate for me to eat Lots of cow, my kids, 
Welcome to Brat Music Live. I'm Boris Brat, Artistic Director of Brat Music Festivals. Tonight we preview Rodgers and Hammerstein's The Sound of Music, one of the most popular musicals of all time. You'll enjoy the full performance live on August 13th in First Ontario Concert Hall. Sound of Music is one of the best known and universally loved musical comedies. Its melodies are memorable and the story gripping. This evening, you'll meet three members of our cast. Maya Jenkins, who plays Maria, Abigail Veenstra, the mother Abbas, Adam French, Captain Von Trapp. We'll also meet our director, Lou Zampronia, and gain insights into his ideas for the production. The musical excerpts you will see were all pre-recorded in Lou's studio, observing social distancing, of course. They've been filmed without costumes and just a suggestion of sets accompanied on the piano by Michael Mulrooney. The interviews of the artists and Lou are taking place from their homes. 
So you'll have to imagine the music accompanied by a full symphony orchestra with lights and costumes. But you will hear the gorgeous music and these superb young artists. You'll probably want to sing along. Please feel free to do just that. We'd love it if you would comment as you watch our show. You may also ask any questions which come to mind. Simply type, press enter, and we'll answer in real time. Now, if you feel so inclined, we'd appreciate any donations you may wish to make. Brought Music Live is offered free to you, our public. Now, as I'm sure you'll appreciate, this is a particularly difficult time for musicians and singers whose employment has ceased for the moment. You'll be helping them and Brought Festival in supporting them. Please click on BroughtMusic.com and follow the prompt for donations. Donations over $25 are tax deductible. Now, please help me welcome Maya Jenkins. You're going to be playing the part of Maria, of course, in our upcoming production of The Sound of Music. And I wanted, first of all, to ask you a little bit about your own career in musical comedy. Yeah, of course. So I'm a recent graduate of the Music Theatre Performance Program at Sheridan College. Um, since graduating, I was very fortunate to play Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady with Brought Festival last summer. Since then, I've done some other workshops for some new upcoming Canadian musicals. And yeah, I've been traveling and that's what I've been up to this year. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Tell me a little bit about the role of Maria. How do you perceive the role? Yeah, it's very, you know, it's so funny because I've been thinking back so much to Eliza and My Fair Lady and the similarities between the two characters, but also the differences. They, I see they both have the same kind of path and they're both wanting the same thing. They're both searching for love and acceptance, but they go about it in such different ways, I guess. With Eliza, it was trying to better herself in a more intellectual way. With Maria, she's really just trying to find her joy in this world, and that happens to be through music. And so there's more of a softness I find with Maria that I've been really exploring. Well, certainly that's a wonderful description of it and we look forward to performing together. Thank you yeah. so much.
Thank you, Maya. That was beautiful. Luz Ampronia, you've had a distinguished career on Broadway, in film, and as an educator. Tell us a little bit about that career and what are the highlights? Ah, well, I mean, the career was like everybody has to work and I stumbled into it, I think, quite accidentally. As a young kid, I wanted to dance, so I danced. I found myself in London, England, out of work and needing a job. Uh, so, <laughs> angel, you know, fools rush in where angels fear to tread, that kind of thing. So I went to an audition. <laughs> and I got the job. I ended up on stage in, um, in the, the stage show of Man of La Mancha. I did loads of TV broadcasts. I did movies, uh, Fiddler on the Roof and Man of La Mancha. But it was, you know, uh, I don't know, just by accident. Uh, I dreamt the impossible dream. <laughs> yes, and very successfully too. Uh, you have uh, so far staged for us two production, West Side Story and My Fair Lady and are about to do Sound of Music. Uh, what are the challenges of producing, directing a show with an orchestra on stage along with the actors and dancers? Oh my God, it's enormous because there's 68 piece orchestra and they're sharing the stage with you and you've got a cast of 18 or 19 or 20 people. So the spacing and the blocking and the directing is obviously very challenging but gratifying because when it works, it's fantastic. Uh, hopefully it keeps working. It doesn't just fall to pieces. <laughs> Why is the sound of music so popular today and has remained popular since it was originally written and then filmed? Wow, how do I put that into a nutshell? Uh, well, it's really one of the greatest love stories of all time. Uh, and what's a good love story without conflict? And, and <laughs> there's plenty of conflict in this story. I mean, first of all, we have Maria uh, and her love of God, and she's feeling guilt that she is uh, betraying him when she feels um, attraction towards this Captain Von Trapp. <laughs> and then, of course, there's the other obstacle of Hitler and the Nazi regime. And then to top it all off, they have to climb a mountain. <laughs> Absolutely. And, th and then there's, the, then there's the, the young puppy love story between Rolf and Liesel, uh, and then we see how that develops and how the young Nazi movement takes over and ruins that. Uh, and we, we haven't even got it to, uh, to Captain Von Trapp and his love of his seven children and his uh, fiance, Elsa, uh, and their love affair that just can't survive. In fact, there's a number in the show that says love can't survive because of the conflict and his love of his nation of Austria, which causes him to sing one of the most beautiful songs, Edelweiss. Well, my opinion is that I think the music is so great and so infectious and people immediately, uh, the tunes, the songs are, are in your ear and, and sort of are earworms, if you will, and you can't get rid of them and you keep wanting to sing along. Well, and I, and I you know, I'm, I've got to be honest about this. I'm not a lover of the show or the music, but I've directed it twice and now this will be the third time. And I really think, uh, to bat my own self on the back, is that I feel I do a good job because I'm trying to make more of it than is really there. I'm trying to make every word count and mean something to all those that love it so much and then hopefully help, help the people that don't love it so much to love it a little bit. <laughs> You've worked a great deal with young young people, our children, as well as the children of so many people in the Hamilton area. Uh, what do you find particularly uh, wonderful about working with young people? You enjoy it, obviously, and they enjoy you. Well, I mean, I'm not sure they enjoy me all, <laughs> as much as I enjoy them. I just love to watch the development from nothing to something and how I can make, and my teachers who I hire, get them to go beyond what they think they're capable of. I think this is the whole point. We have to push and push and push, and they get there's a satisfaction out of achieving something. We all need goals, and uh, the more conflicts we have, the, we surpass those conflicts, conquer them, and we end up successful. And kids can do that for you. Young adults can do that. They're not uh, oh, jaded in any shape, way, or form. Uh, they haven't yet. Uh, gone off into this weird world of entertainment and uh, and been hurt, elated, you know, it's all those things that come along with being in this business. 
Well, I have to tell you that I really enjoy working with you because I think we are both, uh, we're both infected with a love of theater, a love of music, and a love of young people. And I thank you so much for the joy that you've brought to so many people, uh, both at Theater Aquarius and now working together with Brought Music Festival. Well, thank it's you. exciting. It's really exciting working with you, Boris, and your organization too. And I love the good times and the bad times. The times when we have conflict and then something good always comes of that conflict. Absolutely. A little friction never hurt. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Lou Zampronia. All my pleasure. Say hello to the family. Okay. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> I'd like you now to meet Abigail Veenstru, who plays the part of the Mother Abbess in our Sound of Music production. Hello, Abigail. Welcome to Brought Music Live. Hi, Boris. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. How about you? I'm doing great. So tell me a little bit about your background. With whom did you study and uh, what's your vocal background and what brought you to musical theater? Well, um, I mean, I've been singing, doing piano since I was four, but I actually was able to go into the classical field. I studied at West, uh, Western University for my undergrad and my master's. And uh, I finished that last April, and now I'm studying with a soprano, Adrian Prasanka, in Toronto. Oh, that's wonderful. Lovely. Oh, yeah, she's amazing. And she's uh, yeah. Artist. And she's oh. also our next guest. I know. I'm so next excited to watch next that. Saturday, yeah. <laughs> Abigail, you have a rather fascinating family background. I you, do. <laughs> your parents are missionaries in Africa. Yep. I'm the youngest of five kids. Uh, we moved to East Africa, to Tanzania, when I was eight. Uh, went to boarding school, was homeschooled, did lots of different things. I actually had an exciting adventure. I got my kidney removed in Kenya. <laughs> it's just a lot of crazy things happen. And then, uh, yeah, I moved back to Canada when I was 13. And uh, yeah, it's very, uh, it was just lots of things happen. <laughs> Fascinating. So tell me a little bit about the mother, Abbas. Oh, how do you portray her and what is special about her character? Well, she's this incredible woman who is more um, on the elder side. I have a history of being cast as old women <laughs> due to my voice type. But um, she is elegant and poised and beautiful. And she has control of the situation. And she has great insight on her different characters around her. Yes, absolutely. And she recognizes that uh, perhaps Maria is not really cut out to be a nun no. after all. And, and <laughs> we have a different future. Mm -hmm. and, and that that future is real and that future, uh, that future is, is, is important to the, not only to the play, but is important to her character. Absolutely. Well, let's hear you sing. Sit down, Maria. About last night, Reverend Mother, I was late. It's not about you being late, Maria. I must have awakened half the abbey. Very few of us were sleeping. We could only think you had lost your way. Reverend Mother, I couldn't get lost up on that mountain. It's my mountain I was brought up on. Many times I'd climb up that mountain at night, singing all the way at the top of my voice. And in the garden, you were singing at the top of your voice. I had come to the window, and when you saw me, you slept. I really wish you hadn't. I used to sing that very song when I was younger, which I cannot now remember all the words. Thank you. 
Maria. This must have been a trying experience for you. Why did they send you back to us? They didn't send me back. I left without saying goodbye. Sit down. What happened? Why did you do this? I was confused. I've never felt that way before. I could hardly breathe, and I knew I couldn't face him again. Tell me about it, my child. Do you like him? Oh, yes, Reverend Mother, but that's what's torturing me. I was there on God's errand. Bravo, Abigail, and Maya. And now just another reminder to help us make these programs possible by your donation, large or small. Please visit our website, brotmusic.com, and click Donation. In this time when we cannot count on ticket sales, your help is deeply appreciated. But back to the sound of music. Please keep your questions coming. The part of the Captain Von Trapp is played by Adam French and I'm delighted to welcome him to our program. Hello, Adam French. Now, actually, this is the very first time we're meeting, which is rather <laughs> strange, because normally, of course, we'd be into rehearsals. But it's a pleasure to meet you uh, virtually. Um, <laughs> uh, you're, you, you're singing the part of the captain, Captain Von Trapp. Uh, tell me a little bit about the role and your perspective of it. Yeah, so uh, Captain Von Trapp, uh, Obviously, uh, a pretty interesting guy. Um, he is uh, obviously struggling with what's going on in his country, and um, as well as just trying to uh, figure out kind of his role in his family. I mean, obviously, he's a military background, and his kids uh, are uh, are falling in line with regards to what he has been teaching his soldiers, and um, and then in comes this. Uh, 
this lady who introduces herself as the new nanny and uh, just kind of takes over and, uh, and shows him some other things with regards to life and how to live life. Yes, uh, he, he d doesn't start out as a very sympathetic character, but, it, but as we get to the end, he, he one really has a, a, a much warmer sense of who he is and his personality. Uh, yeah, that, you, you, you can see how his hardened shell kind of softens and yeah, definitely. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your own career. How did you get into musical comedy? Well, um, actually, it's, it's, been a, it's been kind of a hidden uh, passion of mine. Uh, I come from a sports background, and so my, my love was, was hockey, and so my focus was there, but always really enjoyed theater and, and singing, uh, sang in the locker room, things like that. <laughs> and then um, kind of late in life, actually, my daughter, uh, she told me I should try out for a Theater Ancaster show, uh, which was one of their spring shows. They do a concert series. And so um, I decided to try out and uh, got a part and uh, did some songs in their shows. And then from there, uh, they're a great community theater, got involved with their stage productions as well too. And just started to sing and acting. And again, I just, I have a, a hidden passion for it. And just finally in my forties decided to, get into it a little bit more and absolutely love it. So that's kind of my background, more community theater at this point and just kind of getting some opportunities and, and trying it out. Well, I'm looking very much forward to working with you and uh, when we all get together this August, hopefully, and if not, yes. we'll do it next August. <laughs> Yes, I was, uh, I was excited as well. And uh, yeah, so hopefully uh, August will work out. If not, then yeah, we'll see where it goes. But yeah, I would definitely uh, look forward to getting on stage and, and doing this live. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adam French. Thank you very much. Pleasure again to meet you. One of the most touching songs in the show is this little song about a white flower, the emblem of Austria, the Edelweiss. Our soloist will end this evening's program with this charming yet patriotic song. Now, in the sound of music, this song beguiles the audience at the festival, allowing the Von Trapp family to escape the Nazis as they venture over the mountains to freedom. Thank you, Maya Jenkins, Abigail Wiemstra, and Adam French for your beautiful vocal contributions to this evening's Brock Music Live. Thank you, Lou Zampronia, for helping to put this show together, and to Tom Oliver for your help with coachings. Thanks also to our pianist, Michael Mulrooney. But above all, thank you for watching.
commenting, and for your generous donations. Next Saturday at 7.30, we welcome internationally renowned Canadian soprano Adrian Piechonka, truly one of our national treasures. Adrian's performances have taken her to New York's Metropolitan Opera, the Wiener Staatsoper, Royal Opera House Covent Garden, Paris, Berlin, Madrid, Munich, Frankfurt, Los Angeles, and La Scala, as well as some of Europe's finest summer festivals, including Salzburg, Bayreuth, Gleinborn, Aix-en-Provence, and under the direction of such conductors as James Levine, Ricardo Muti, Zubin Mehta, Sir Neville Mariner, Claudio Abado, the late Richard Bradshaw, Lauren Mazel, Nicholas Harnoncourt, and the late Sir George Schulte. We have the great honor to have her provide a master class every year to our participants in broad opera. Adrienne will sing for us, accompanying herself on piano and guitar, and give us candid insights into her stellar career. Please join us next Saturday evening, May 30th, at 7.30, broughtmusic.com. Have a great evening, and thanks for watching.